They care about the result that they're going to get and that's it. They care about, is this going to put more money in my pocket and is what you're what I'm buying from you gonna put 10x more money in my pocket? That's all they care about. We can like trace numbers towards that. Like, there's probably yeah. videos you have right now that have a, a dollar number behind it, and mm -hmm. you won't even realize. Wow, that video made that client a million dollars. Yeah, I didn't even realize it. But that's that's part of your resume now. It's the feeling you get. Yep from buying that product. Mm -hmm. That's what needs to be in your advertising. It's not the number you need to call. It's not the call to action. Mm -hmm. It's the showing the feeling that you get when you buy your product or service. No. That's the key. So we're in the fame office again. We are. Um, in the front of the office. How do you feel about after doing the first episode? Like after doing it and then I guess putting it out into the world, like what's your, what was your initial thought? Yeah, the first episode. So I, you know, as with any podcast, you get like nervous in the fifth, first 15 minutes. Like that mm -hmm. was kind of my first time doing a podcast. And then we get, once you get into it, dude, it's like it's game over. And we just started just Flowing. getting deep into it like we normally do in person yeah. and like getting in those deep conversations. And so I, I got a lot of results like immediately from that first podcast. Mm -hmm. I had people reaching out to me like I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is only like our first podcast. Yeah. So um, I think it's a good dynamic that you and I have mm -hmm. like me on the production side, you on the advertising side. Mm -hmm. And like just after we connected in that first podcast, we've already started like even working together, like yeah. our clients and you've done like some forecasts for me. We're getting things going. We got yep. like a big deal coming on the way together. So yeah, we we're not only just killing the podcast side, but we're also like doing work together now, which will I think will help us in the podcast side too because we could talk about the stuff that we've done together. Yeah, yeah, it's already it's already been uh, a plus a plus one or return on you know time putting into it, and the moment, most importantly, it's fun to do. It's fun to talk about stuff that you know we love to to begin with because like we have a lot of conversations off camera and we always get riled up on like the things that we can do the things we can accomplish um and we always we always think like man if we just recorded this it would just be legendary and it's to finally get to that point especially for you like i wanted to talk to you a little bit about your 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 transition of finally coming from behind the camera to doing like doing content solo to doing oh, podcasts yeah. like how has that been mentally for you like okay I've been producing for some time. I come from the film world and then most people that are behind yeah. the camera, they don't like the camera. Right. And now you're like, you're like at the beginning of that, that phase. Like, how is that? How's it feel? Yeah. So I like, you know, I grew up as a young kid actor. Mm -hmm. I was on like a, a Phoenix Children's Hospital commercial. I was on a GCU commercial. Yeah. Like my biggest one was a U-Haul commercial. I didn't know this. Yeah, I saw the commercial you did with your dad. I thought yeah. I saw that. Yeah, the so my dad is pretty big in the industry, and he's the one who got me into all the commercials. Yeah, but um, he it was genius because he literally brought me on set, and I got to see what happened behind the scenes. Like mm. he he made me act as like you know like small like little kid roles, you know, in like commercials, and he just like put me through it all. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, he just like needs. He probably just like needs someone to help him out on set, but like little did I know he was like prepping me for the future. Yeah, and like when I was on set, I remember like the first time I was on set, I'm like, this is like what I want. This is what I want to do, and I yeah. was like so inspired. Like every kid's dream is to be an astronaut. Or, How old were you when you like? Well, like, I'm sure there was like a time. Was that like around? Was that a moment that like highlighted everything? Where you? Like you see in the movies where like, that's what I want to do when I grow up. Well, actually, I, the moment that I knew I wanted to do this was not really on set. It was I started it was eight years old and I started on Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro. Mm -hmm. And I started like editing. It was like a model. It was like a, some sort of model that I edited it for. And it was like for my dad. He's like, hey, here, like have fun with this, like edit it. And um. And he probably like after I was done, he probably re-edited it, but because <laughs> it was for his client. But he wanted to like kind of have me just. I was like eight years old on Premiere Pro, <laughs> which if you haven't been on Premiere Pro, it's like a advanced editing software with a bunch of different buttons, and you're like you have no idea what's going on. Yeah. But I like had so much fun with it yeah. when I was eight. That was when I was like I want to do this yeah. for the rest of my life because I loved it. And I love like putting the story together and 
and I put like cheesy text up on the screen and shit. So. Dude, that has a lot to do with where you're at today. Like I remember when you told you showed me the video you did for your dad for his birthday. I think I thought oh, that yeah. was really cool. <laughs> I was like, that's yeah. pretty sick. Yeah, dude. I mean, he, he that guy is you know, he, you can't give gifts to someone who's you, you know you got to make it meaningful. Yeah. That's the key to giving gifts is like making it meaningful. And I thought, what better way to give a gift to someone who like taught me film production than to make like a mini doc for him. So that was like kind of the thought behind the gift. But it was like kind of funny, too. So that was good. And I think that's that's really important. Just hearing it out loud because it shows it shows where your 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 intentions are, especially when it comes to, you know, we always talk about it like client work. We're so passionate about our work, but all that really, to me, it, it means that we're passionate about just serving others to some degree, whether we're getting paid yeah. for it or not. And so that's, that's what it's, I think is really important because it's, it's not a lot of it showcased. And it's, this is why it feels like an obligation to jump on mm-hmm. camera. Cause like, if we, if we make that intent broad, uh, and, and more, it's not broad, but known to the, to the world out there, we can right. inspire more people that might have great intentions to, come in front of the camera and then share what they have um, to overshine, you say, the negative people or people that just want to make a dollar because like everybody yeah. wants to make a dollar. But if you have that like driving force behind what you do and that passion behind what you do and then you sh- tell that to your client yep. and you show that to them, they're going to that's going to connect with them and they're going to be like, oh, this guy doesn't just want my money. He actually is passionate about this. Yeah. Like I was just talking to, uh, I had a client meeting like two days ago mm-hmm. um, and we were talking about like our origin stories mm-hmm. and like what fueled you to do it. And mm-hmm. he has like a janitorial service. You probably, if he's watching this, he knows, but we talked about it and he started his, like you, you would think like, how does someone get into a janitorial? So, you know, that's like kind of a boring business, mm-hmm. but he started out working at um, a company and he was in the office building and the guy who did janitorial for that office building just like came in and, and replaced the trash and then like kind of just wiped some things down and then left. And Mm -hmm. he's like, well, is this what, is this all they do? Like what if like stuff and cobwebs build up and all like, they don't, they don't like care about really a lot. A lot of janitorial services are just in and out. Mm -hmm. And he saw that every day. He saw the guy just kind of lackadaisically just clean the place and wipe it a little bit. And that fueled him to make his own janitorial service. So if we could do that as like um, video production companies and as advertising agencies, if we could show that kind of purpose, that's going to go a long way with the client, you know, the end consumer. No, hundred percent. No, the reason why it's it's so exciting to jump in front of the camera, because we not only want to do that, but we want to be able to have reference of us telling our story. And it comes to, us sharing why we did what we did, how we started, where we started, and why we do what we do. Yeah. And it's just, it makes that transition so much easier. Cause think about it. Think how many advertising agencies and production companies that are offering a service, but you just don't have an idea of who they are. They just don't know what they do, why they do. They might do good work. Maybe, maybe not. But yeah. if there's 10, 20 companies, if I left in a production company in Arizona or an agency in Arizona or across the country, how do I choose? How do I know who to choose? And this is like a big piece of doing that. Like, yeah. okay, I saw Levi, I saw Sean, and I got to know him a little bit. And it makes that phone call a lot easier to be like, hey, is this is this fame? Yeah, and or, I, th- I think the client's always going to choose the company that gets them the most results. Yep. We're just talking about this. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about that. Uh, but the client's always, the client doesn't care like about 4k and they, you know, they yeah. don't, they don't know what 4k, they don't know what high quality audio is. They don't know the difference between, you know, external audio and like a boom <laughs> audio. They don't know any of that, dude. Yeah. And, and, I, and it's like, why are you trying to upsell people based on like, Oh, I'll give you a bronze package, a silver package, a gold package. The gold package is going to have 4k and this and that. I'm like, the client does not know what any of that means. They yeah. care about the result that they're going to get, and that's it. Yeah. They care about, is this going to put more money in my pocket? Mm-hmm. And is what you're what I'm buying from you going to put 10x more money in my pocket? That's all they care about. Yep. And if you can find a way to show how you're going to do that to mm-hmm. them, 
that's going to accelerate your business. And this is why it's so beautiful that we're sitting down because like my biggest thing as 2023 ends is making relationships with as many people that, that do production. That's where the voice of production, you know, hatch when it comes to like our, our group chat to um, overall doing a lot of work with people like yourself or Jason or Isaac or Jesus because the biggest, the best way or the, the best way to, I guess, speed up the result or identify better results is in the production side of things in terms of what's being advertised. So if we can produce more uh, content or quality content or a definitive narrative or hitting certain pain points like we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. the better we can yield a, a more, I say, exaggerated or immediate and then not only most importantly consistent result yeah. over time and then we can not only that when it comes to like I, I was talking with Isaac like we can like trace numbers towards that like there's probably yeah. videos you have right now that have a, a dollar number behind it and mm -hmm. you won't even realize wow that video made that client a million dollars yeah I didn't even realize it but that's that's part of your resume now I, I, I know that we did a video for a client that made them six hundred thousand dollars <laughs> like that's, I know that. And like knowing that is like crazy. And it's like, that's the thing with marketing. It's kind of hard to put a value number on it. That's the toughest thing with marketing, but there's always different ways you can do that and explain your value. But yeah, yeah but trying to figure that out and like constantly following up your client. And if you're like a video production company and like, you know how hard it is to measure dollar amount results. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what I'm you call, he's calling you leave. I was like, Hey, what can we expect with this? I'm like, I, I, I can tell you, this is what I, I tell Levi is it's the same thing. I tell clients, you're going to get the best opportunity of results or consistent or immediate results working with, us or working with you know our partnership based off of what we've created can i promise what i did for that client that did a million dollars for yeah. you not necessarily but you have somebody in your corner that has current results that's ticking up like the stock market so i i kind of agree with that but i also kind of disagree because i think if you're not if you don't fully believe that your product or your service is going to get the client a 10 X result. If you're not a hundred thousand percent confident mm -hmm. in that, then you need to rethink your business model. Mm -hmm. Cause I, for me, I'm like a thousand percent confident. If I'm choosing a client mm -hmm. and I see that I'm a fit for them, I have to be a thousand percent confident in order to make that sale that I'm going to give them their 10 X result. And I'm going to accelerate their business to the next level like really grow their business i gotta be confident in that in order to sell them well, yeah i wouldn't say yeah and i agree, I it, agree. it can't be like oh I, yeah i might get it i might no you have to be like i'm gonna get this result for you you from this video you are gonna get the best results and you have to again you have to talk about the results you have to get them excited about mm -hmm. it and you have also you have to know like you have to know and believe Truly well, of that. course. Yeah. You want to believe like, of course you want to believe you want to have some type of knowing of like, yeah, based off of what you've got in place as far as result. Um, it's just putting an exact timeline on it. That's more so what I, I'm saying. It's it's not what I always say. It's not a matter of if it's just a matter of when. And that's why one of the things we talk about, like I'm always I'm always an advocate for volume. Any client that I work with, if we can have volume of variation then yeah. we're gonna we're gonna get you the best result. We're gonna get you the result quickly and consistently, almost immediately as possible. Versus someone, example, somebody that might have a lower budget and they want to get a sensational immediate result. That's not gonna. That doesn't correlate with a quick result as opposed to somebody that has a a higher budget, mm -hmm. then we can invest into longer studio production time, having more hooks, having more scripts together. And then we can test that with a pretty decent budget and get that result, I say two weeks or even a week quicker. Mm -hmm. That's more so. And I, I'm glad you said that. Cause like, yeah, hundred percent need to believe in what you have. And I would, I would say, so I have belief cause like I've, I've gotten better and better with every swing and I've gotten more and more results. It's just, controlling like i said controlling the expectation based yeah, off of because well, yeah i don't want to lie to somebody that has two grand i'm like yeah i'm not like yeah. no that's no i can't that's not gonna yeah. you, you see what i'm saying that's more so Absolutely. where i was trying to yeah i was but, but i wanted to them. bring it up because last time we talked about yeah. like uh steering them in the right direction and like a lot of times they don't know yep um 
I, I think as for what we do, we kind of have to tell them what they need because, um, because a lot of times in our industry, like they're lost, like in video production and in advertising, they don't know, like I said, they don't know what 4k even means. They don't know what <laughs> testing a B testing even means. So we have to tell them it's our job to tell them, Hey, here's option a here's option B yep. based off of my experience and based off of your industry, I think you should go with option A. Like mm-hmm. we have to decide for them mm-hmm. because then that's where a lot of production companies miss the mark is mm-hmm. they, they give them too many options. Yep. Overwhelm them. You know, it's think about it. Like if you give a five year old, five different flavors of ice, ice cream mm-hmm. and you say, Hey, choose one, they're going to be confused versus if you say, if you give a five year old, uh, vanilla and chocolate, they're going to be like, okay, vanilla. All right. I like vanilla. Mm-hmm. And, and it's way easier for the child to decipher which ice cream they want between a and B. That's what we have to do. Yep. That's our job to tell them, this is what you need to do. Here's option A. Here's also option B. I think you, I know from my experience, you will get better results from option A. 100%. And you have to be confident in that. If you want to get an idea of like what production is going on in your area, like if you want a quality production from someone like from a Dutch company that, that like, like Levi has, go on Facebook as library and then have a tab up for that and then have another tab up with your industry competitors, say locally or nationally, Mm -hmm. and then type their names into the Facebook ads library and see if they're running ads or see what type of ads they're running. And you do that, you're going to likely get excitement because likely someone in your industry, in this case, a landscapey or or tree cutting company, you're going to see that the production quality is a very is at a very low scale to close to non-existent. And <laughs> that's what's that's going to give you excitement of uh, to to figure out or differentiate yourself from everyone else. Yep. That's the key you were talking about. Yes. Is, yes. And I want to talk about that for a second okay, because ahead. we see a lot of like advertisements that are just like whatever we'll film it on our phone and it, the quality's not there. Mm-hmm. It's just like saying, hey, we're I'm Bob and I work at this plumbing company. Mm-hmm. Uh, use us today. And this is the number you call. It's low emotion. No emotion. Yeah. There's no emotion yeah. in a lot of advertising. And when you go to the Facebook ad library, I do that a lot too, by the way. <laughs> when you go to the Facebook ad library and you look up people in your industry, like local businesses, all of them are like that. Now, if you go to YouTube and you search up best commercials 2023, that's what I recommend you do. Mm-hmm. Because then you'll see actually what works. Mm-hmm. Like if you look at a, any Coca-Cola commercial or like Modelo, for example, if you watch NFL on yeah. Sunday, you see a lot of Modelo commercials. Mm-hmm. Notice how the product is barely in the shot. Ever. Mm-hmm. It's never in the shot. It's but what is in the shot yeah. is people having fun and smiling mm-hmm. and clinking their drinks. And it's the um, it's the feeling you get. Yep from buying that product Mm -hmm. and that's what needs to be in your advertising it's not the number you need to call it's not the call to action Mm -hmm. it's the showing the feeling that you get when you buy your product or service no that's the key no 100 percent agree and like you hit it on the head like a lot of if you're trying to advertise or do production or you're working with a company of our uh in comparison of what we do um people don't want to know to buy where to buy they know that but you need to give them reason, yeah. you know, why to buy. And that comes down to the culture, the atmosphere and the overall story that you might be telling. There's a lot of indirect things that you're not including in your production that would help people walk into your door. It's not always by myself because news you're asking for the sale as well as everyone else is asking for the sale because everyone's making a commercial that's saying buy, 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 but there is no why, why, why. They don't need to know where to buy and yeah. like where, like what number to call. They're going to find that. If they really yep. resonate with your product and they want it, they're going to find it. Yep. You know, just think about yourself. When you want a product, when you see a cool product on like TikTok or, or s- scrolling through social media, you're like, oh my God, I need to find that. And you immediately go on Amazon, you do your researching. So if you do that, everyone else does that too. Mm-hmm. You know, so yep. stop worrying about, oh, here's the website you need to type in or here's the number you need to call. That kind of matters, but not so much as the full feeling you get from buying it. If you can get people excited about buying your products or service and you can get, and you can show that in your videos. Mm-hmm. 
then that's how you're going to get people to want to frantically find you and they're going to reach out already wanting to buy. No, oh, 100%. That's and, the key. Yep. And customer testimonials is like a perfect example of something that you don't necessarily need to sell. Uh, it's nothing that's being sold. It's just more so a story that's just being told. It's just yeah. you're just hearing what people, how a product or service was was uh, an impact in that person's life. Yeah. And a compound of consistently having those like stack of stories, like think of a library, you walk into a library and your business has its own library and it's just a directory of actual testimonies, not just yeah. those text testimonies that Video. we've all used yeah. before or as a company or you have that agency that uses, but like video testimonies of customers that already use your products, some that you know that already love your services and try to exchange some type of value yeah. where you can make it a regular thing. Because if you serve, let's say 10, 20 clients a day or 10, 20 clients a week to let's say maybe 50 clients a month um, that actually make a transaction with your business, why don't you have 40 yeah. to 50 video testimonies just compiled, if not posted on a consistent basis, advertised on a consistent basis, just at that level, not yeah. even at a high production standpoint, um, where you have that where people are browsing, they can see somebody that yeah. might look like them, walk like them, talk like them. But that's not a sell. It's a story. That's it's a matter. Sell. It's a matter of writing it in your process. Yep. To saying after we're done serving the client. Yep. You know, two weeks after we're done serving the client, we ask them to do a testimonial video for us. It's as simple as writing that into your process. And the worst they could say is no. Yep. But if you did a great job for them, they're most likely going to say yes. And I think you're going to be surprised. It's just people are afraid yeah. to ask, hey, can you get in front of a camera? Because getting in front of a camera is kind of daunting. And that's why you got to dress it in a very, yeah, they're, they're afraid. They're afraid to ask their clients that much. Of, they think it's too big of an ask, but it's really not. Um, and I have video testimonials. You mm -hmm. have video testimonials. Yep. It is 1000% worth it. And it's something you can put in your proposals to, sh to show other clients your mm -hmm. video testimonials. It's something you can put in newsletter, social media. You can use video testimonials for a lot yeah. of things. And it's so good for just validating. This is motivation for me. I use it as motivation because like, yeah. if I'm asking for a testimony, it's just more motivation for me to do a good job because I tell every client, your success is my success. The yeah. same thing with you. And if I if I ask, I typically ask like, if I could get it like, to, all right, after this first ninety days, and we get your first wins, and then we get consistent. I will uh, in here. I would love to get your experience of the process of how much money you've made. You know, views overall. What's your experience working with storyline or fame, and that would be something that I say to start the conversation. Yeah. Um, and so during that process, I'm working my tail off because like I want to get a good testimony, let alone have them want to give a testimony because in that period, that's that's like where the excitement's at. Like, mm -hmm. okay, oh, I got the first one. Like yesterday, I got a text, $4,000 sale came in. I'm like, yes, let's go. Yeah. And so it makes that much easier to do it versus if you don't mention it at all. But overall, it's just accountability. If you're especially if you want to have that testimony, because that's that's currency for, for all of us. It's currency for you. It's yeah. currency for me. It's, it's gold. Currency, it's literally gold because it's real. And we're living in the world of A.I., where, you know, things can be faked and, you know, anyone can maybe write a testimony that may yeah. or may not be them. But what's the yeah. most realest thing? Right. Is like, Video and showing. Uh, yeah. Right. That's very Sitting true. next to them even, you know. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. But authenticity. Like, yeah. That's what people want. That's what we all want. Yeah. It's going to, I think that's a big value um, for marketers as well is yep. knowing um, how to be authentic Especially, <laughs> like you said, in the new AI age um, and showing that authenticity in your advertisements, in your video advertisements. Mm -hmm. um, and and because you want to relate to the world, but yep. you don't want to do it in a, in a fake way because people can see right through it. You know, you want to relate to the world in an authentic way. Yeah. Um, and, and, and look up, look up like commercials again on, on YouTube and look them up and see how other big corporations are showing how their product or service and the feeling of their product or, or service is when you buy it. And, um, they, they do a great job of expressing it in an authentic way. Yeah. I would say the biggest thing when, I, when you see a good commercial and 
th- I think this would be a great a great segment. It's like the commercial the commercial relates to you before they like sell you. Like you feel like they relate to you before yeah. they like sell you. And they you. draw you into the world. Yeah. And then you see the you then you see it where it's like call action where but it feels it feels in, inviting. It's like walking down the strip in Vegas or you go into a place where someone's trying to sell you something. Like yeah. you go in Vegas, someone's like, "Hey, buy this, buy that." Versus I was literally I literally went to Vegas. I went to the the Sphere, which is crazy. Um, in terms of experience, definitely recommend it. But I went there with with my girlfriend, and then there's just people like walking and talking to us. But I immediately in my head, um, these people are trying to sell like tickets to like these shows. Mm-hmm. I had I was like thinking in my head, I was like, how could I get people to get these cards? Because all they were doing is sitting there and like hitting them together and trying to give them to people. And of course, most people weren't taking them. I'm sure some, mm-hmm. but like immediately, like people were turned off by. It. And my first thought was like, what if I just walked next to these people and just like had this like crazy, like not even crazy conversation, act like I had a conversation. I was thinking of indirect ways to like have them let their guard down uh, to give them it, give them the ticket in an organic way. Mm -hmm. Cause I just from a psychology standpoint, cause no one likes to be sold anything. uh, Dude. Yes. Yeah. I want to talk about that. Yeah. That's a perfect segment. Yeah. Yeah. If you can do that in video advertising, you can draw them into your world through the, like, have you ever like seen uh, a commercial, like a Super Bowl commercial or something? Um, I don't, you, you probably don't remember, but there, a great example is like, maybe, you know, the dog food that is like you refrigerate it. It's like farmer. It's, it's called like farm, the farmer's dog or something. The farmer's like that. dog sounds familiar. Yeah. It's like, so it's like basically, um, organic dog food. Like, you know, people feed their dogs kibble and this company it's called the, I think it's called the farmer's dog or something. Mm. And it's like refrigerated dog food. It costs a little more, but the point is it's, it, it, it extends the life of your dog. Gotcha. And there was like a Super Bowl commercial last Super Bowl where I remember it still to this day. It draws you in immediately to the environment because it shows this little girl getting a new dog. And it it draws you in because you're you're connected with it. It shows the emotion. Relatability. You know, that has the dramatic music going in the background, you know, that's orange sunset, and you get this warm feeling. And again, they're not showing the product at all mm-hmm. in this in this commercial. They show the logo at the end, but they're not trying to sell you at all. They're trying to tell the story of this little girl and her dog and the passing of time as the dog gets older. And the video ends, long story short, she's feeding her dog, you know, the, the product throughout the um, commercial. But mm-hmm. the long story short, it shows the dog that's old and happy and the girl that's all grown up now. Mm-hmm. And you just it's a it's just a flush of nostalgia and warm feeling and you get so soaked into it Mm -hmm. that you don't even care about the product that's out of your mind they bring you into the environment of the commercial in the most organic way and if we can find ways to do that that's how we're going to sell because they're when you're brought into that environment in a commercial it's game over Mm -hmm. people are going to find your product Mm -hmm. no matter what and if you bring that nostalgia of like having your dog when you were a kid if you bring that into it and you bring the emotions into it, people are going to be sold and because it's going to resonate with them in a mental way. You know, it just speaks to the agency name. If your story is not aligned with your marketing and that's, that's the thing you all have a service, you all have a product. We all want to sell more products or services, but think about every time a transaction comes about, there's a story behind that. Whether you have a key, uh, you have an automotive shop or you know you file tax for someone. There's a reason somebody needs the 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 service or product that is being delivered. And if you can really get behind and most importantly ask, start to yeah. ask those questions of the people that you're serving, even our clients, there's a reason why they want to advertise. They they want to make more money for their business, but why do they want to make more money for their business? Or why do they want to put production yeah. at the forefront? There's a reason, and in, in asking why enough times, you'll get that why, but. Now you have to digest how does that why correlate with my product or business, yep. and that is the that's what you need to showcase. That's storyline marketing. Yeah, that's what you need to showcase. Yep. And when I say result, yeah, m- the money result has to do with it, mm-hmm. but the feeling is is the more yep. impactful result. Yep. P- like when you're at when you're in your deathbed, you're not thinking about the money you make. You, you think about the memories and the feelings. Yep. That's why you need to do your advertising like that too. Yep. That's what people are going to remember. Yep. They're not 
going to remember the, they are going to remember the money, but that's deep down inside. People don't care so much about the money. Mm -hmm. They care about how am I going to feel after I use your product? Yep. And there's many ways to do that. Yeah. And there's many ways to do that. Nostalgia. I was just talking about that. We can talk about that too. Mm -hmm. Bringing nostalgia into your advertising. Um, it, you know, ethos, logos, pathos, you know, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of different ways to do that. But if, if you can connect an emotion with your service and correlate those two things, it's going to be a way more memorable advertisement. Yeah. And all result means in the big scheme of it, when it comes to like money and results, where you're building a tribe to some degree to your business or to whatever you're building. And maybe you're doing production or you're doing paid ads towards awareness, towards something. You're building a tribe where people are wanting to be a part of something bigger than to, than themselves. That's yeah. the whole point of evoking more emotion and having nostalgia and getting people to feel certain pain points or, mm -hmm. you know, lovey dovey, you know, emotions. So they, under, they, they, they put themselves in a direction of a tribe because at the end of the day, we want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. And if you're just selling, you're, that's not bigger than yourself. But if you start to, you know, emphasize the story or the quality of how the story is being told, that's how you get, more of your tribe, aka more customers, aka more uh, p more people towards your fundraiser, all these different things. Because like nowadays, no one has an organic thought. Like unless you make a rare, a very conscious effort to not consume so much content, everyone is shaping their thoughts based off of what they consume to some degree. Because like twenty years ago, it's, it wasn't a thing. Even thirty years ago, it wasn't a thing for people to consume as much video and content what they do so now you have an opportunity to really embed your business your tribe that you're trying to create if you look at yeah. it as a tribe then your whole life will change i think especially yeah. if you're a business you need our like services because it's not just money like obviously you want to get money but like tribe that's community like, community. like building communities yep. is a big uh value prop yep. position for is that the right word yeah it's it's a big it's um, our words yeah yeah sure whatever <laughs> um, it's a way to hit the mark for businesses yep. is building communities whether that's um, like I just started working with a um, company that you know does like options trading for crypto mm -hmm. and we're doing we're starting to do videos for them mm -hmm. and instead of just doing it just instead of just having an app about options trading for crypto, they have built a whole community around it and mm -hmm. they have contests and they have a Twitter group and they all talk about blockchain and development and all this. And it's, it's a community of people within their target audience. Mm -hmm. And, and through that, they're not trying to sell, but people naturally want to be a part of that because like you said, tribe mentality, it just goes back yep. like to, you know, when humans were, you know, just walking on this earth, yeah, they immediately started gathering in tribes. And that's how our brains are psychologically meant to think. And if we can build communities in our business and then we can do production and advertisements showcasing those communities and the feelings, the feeling you get from being in that community, mm -hmm. if we can showcase that, that's really going to resonate with our with the consumer's tribal, natural mm -hmm. tribal mindset. Yeah. And if you aren't, aren't, aren't sure of what that is, like that's, this is where, this is where we come into place because like our skill sets are just magnifiers to that. If you don't have it, then our job is to help you identify if you don't have it. Or mm -hmm. If you don't have it, our job is to help you identify. It. And if you have it, we're just magnifying that that result that you already have inside of your mm -hmm. business or your organization and this isn't just to sell this i think you did it you did a podcast uh production day and you told me about it, like you guys did production for ads emails hiring yeah. um it, it's it's a magnification on every level i know we were talking more so about bringing people in from a sales standpoint but this is where production going in 2024 is so important now where if you want to keep people in your organization, you need to do a really fine job and spend a lot of time and investment towards 
highlighting why people should consider being a part of your organization, not yeah. only, but for a long time. Like it's, it's and normal make people. Make it bigger than just your product or service, yeah. the thing you're selling. Make it bigger than that. Yep. Think deeply on the why. Production can bring ability to those that have a strong culture. If you feel like you have a strong culture, if you can highlight that by doing, by investing into the production, yep. we'll attract more people that want to be a part of it. And you can have more yeah. A players for a long time and as a byproduct, help you build your business even more in terms of the, from the, you know, profit and revenue standpoint. Yeah, and, and production can help you exploit that. Yes. And bring that out of you know, your long organization. Way like, for example, there's some videos we do for some people that are just for the internal employees and for no one else. When people think of videos, they think of um, advertising to an external audience. That doesn't necessarily need to it's be only the one case. Piece. That's like one piece, small piece. Sometimes the thing that can bring you the most money is making videos for your internal employees because um, I was producing a podcast mm -hmm. a few like a couple months ago and one of the guys on the podcast he did like a TEDx talk he said something that really resonated with me and he said the customer is not the most important person in the business the employees are because they're the ones that serve your customer say so, it again bro so if you can like I said, what can, what will you do today to make your clients more successful? It's right there. Literally. The thing you can do is build your culture and make videos for your internal employees and, and show them the emotions and how you talk to clients and really immerse them into the environment of your business and your culture and how you think, how you feel, how what emotions you have when you're talking to the client. Mm -hmm. your, like we were talking about earlier, your passion. Yep your upbringing on how you got into this and create that in videos and show that to your internal employees because your employees are the ones that serve your customer and that's going to resonate all the way to your customer. And this is the thing that's scary about that because I was in this scenario where I was in a position where I was hiring internally for like a company that I was working for, a $100 million company, picked up the founder doing Uber and then I worked my way up uh, spoke at their company and uh, at their uh, their uh, conference, their yearly company. We all within like five six months uh, from from working with them. But a lot of businesses don't see it. Like a lot of business, there's such there's so much disconnect. And then the power of video, I saw it with my own eyes. Like I have screenshots, I have texts where it was it was felt so good mm -hmm. to be producing content that helped the company not feel so spaced out. They, mm. they, they didn't feel like they feel like on an island, like the corporate to the field. There was so much disconnect yeah. and there's a lot of businesses that don't see it and they rather hire somebody for a position or they, they don't really look at that detail. But the simple detail, like you said, it's as simple as, you know, investing internally and in, and not thinking you just have to invest externally to get people to stay if somebody that is a a player not exactly. leave to go to a different company 14 20 of these a yeah. players go to a different company and it, the small detail that would get them to stay is just the investment or knowing where to invest yeah. internally to keep them to stay but there's a lot of companies that don't see it and but anyway it's a bit it's a great bridge that's what i mean and yeah, I think, pretty, yeah it's it's a great way to get everyone aligned in your organization yeah, align integrated understanding but yeah <laughs> we sent as coos like chief operating officers especially yeah we spend so much time trying to integrate everyone and mm -hmm. um you have the coo going on the front line of, of like your warehouse or your factory or whatever and and seeing what's happening in the business and then they kind of report it to the executives and it's like there's like just this disconnect yeah. between the high level executives and the people on your front line and yep. you kind of have like the people who are in operations be the you know messenger there's such a big disconnect in a lot of these big companies and i cannot express how effective video is in connecting those two back together again mm -hmm. you know and and i've done it for companies too yep. i have experience in doing this and mm -hmm. I, i've seen how internal videos connect the organization back together because Let's be honest. Nobody reads those internal emails. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> yeah. Like, like they immediately delete. Yep. Or they skim through it. They're like, all right, whatever. I'll, I'll skim through it just in case if the boss brings it up, I'll know at least what to say. Yeah. Whatever. 
imagine if you open that internal email and you see their face and it's engaging and and it has captions, you know, however, whatever, however you want to put it. But yep. imagine you see their face and it's engaging and it's just like the YouTube videos you watch. Mm-hmm. And it's something that you're actually interested in. Imagine how much more that's going to resonate with you than words. Yeah. I've seen it happen many times. Yeah. And I know that this is an effective technique. And this is why you need to have videos, not just externally, but internally. Yeah. And this is a great way to rewrite the narrative of corporate because like, Corporate, the word by itself has a negative connotation because I've worked with I work with a couple corporate companies myself and true. and worked inside of corporate companies and it has a very negative connotation where people just write narratives in their head based off the information they know and a lot of the times in my scenario and people I've talked to that have been a part of it the information everything's very secretive or isolated or it's 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 them versus them when we're all working under the same uh, umbrella mm-hmm. um, or company people that worked in and it shouldn't be that divide like it, it, there's need there needs to be bridges to connect it but overall to do that we got to rewrite the definition of corporate you got to rewrite how we do certain things you need to have video sales letter there needs to be introductions to the staff of those that corporate are into the field you need to bring in new talent that that um that to work with people that have been there for 10 15 years and then not just be a a seniority rank or if there is seniority who's here who's been here you know who's he- been yeah. here why do you do what you do you know what's your responsibility what's your favorite color um and, and also do- like i would say there's a lot of stuff like that that the employees on the bottom line don't know that the executives do know and i was just talking yes. to a new client the other day where he was like yeah we so we profit, um, we only profit about 30, 25% mm-hmm. and 70%, 75% goes back to the employees. And he was like, would it be good for my employees to know that, yes. that they are being taken care of and that most of the <laughs> revenue is going to them? Yes. And he was like, we need to make videos on that. Yes. And I'm like, yes, we do. And I cannot tell you like h- how many of those little things you can find that mm-hmm. if you go through everything and you see this might be good for my employees to know, mm-hmm. you'll be surprised at how many things you find and create videos on that stuff yep. and show them to your organization. Just think about that. Like that little detail when families go home, corporate, when you're in corporate, people talk about their day. And if I talk to people on a day to day and you had a very public service, let's say, it's a proud thing. People want to be proud of where they work. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was trying to say. So 75 cents, if 75 cents of every dollar goes back into the employees, that is attractive. Just saying that out loud. Like we understand top dollar is important. Profits, losses, we want to know that number. But like if that's part of a metric to rewrite corporate is, you know, knowing the things that my company does for me. We know what we need to do for you. Companies, people that work inside, we know we need people need to perform. But like, what are you doing for me to that I can be proud of or I will share organically? Yeah. Like that's something organically I would be happy to tell people. I say I work for an organization and I knew I worked for fame. And he's like, Yep, seventy five percent of every dollar we make or any client we work with right. goes back into us. We get new new equipment. You know, we might go on a trip once a once a month, quarterly, or right. towards our conference. Like that's something that people would, that's almost envious in, in this point in day and age. But so many people just focus on numbers like ne- profit, profit. Okay. I get it. You're making profit. We want to hit quota, but what, what, what numbers or what things are you doing internally? Like you're saying that goes back to the employee. If that is highlighted or I, I would love that. Like yeah. if, if I knew I worked for a company, I would, I would just work for that. Like that's Absolutely. one of the things that would make me want to like, okay, I'm really going to stay. Yeah. It's six o'clock. I'm going to stay till six ten today. Like yeah. that's, those are the little things that get employees to be like, you Excited know Excited to work. Exactly. Yeah. For a company, for the cause versus for just the profit. Cause like, yeah. Okay. I, I made the yeah. company more money, but my paycheck's the same. Yeah. Like there's no why in that. It's so empty. Yeah, it's a great way to get your employees excited for what you do and think about from their standpoint, too. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm now I get the weekly video from the mm-hmm. boss and, you know, I get to see, you know, what's the updates on the company. And yep. and it's just like you're getting them aligned. Right. With what's my impact? Yeah. 
of my piece in here, I might be one of a thousand employees, but like, how does my impact work in the company? Like, I feel like you would see some type of increase to people wanting to go above and beyond what they do. No, versus you do, trying you to do see early. it. I've seen it. Yeah. I, Cause I've done internal videos a lot. Yeah. Cause you know, my corporate niche, yeah. I, I do a lot of internal videos. I've seen the results I've gotten. I've seen how much more excited the employees get from mm -hmm. watching the videos Yep, and it works. It just works. So we can move on, but you need to do that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We've been talking about internal videos yeah. for a while, but it's important. That's why. Yeah. We're just passionate. We're, we're passionate about people. We're passionate about It's just about another element of production that you need to be doing. Go, going in 2044, we've talked about, like last episode, we talked about ourselves, of of what we've learned from our clients. But what what's some things that our, our client in 2024, maybe tools, like, mm -hmm. you know, you show me a tool for creating proposals. What's something that they can take into 2024 that you feel is something that can help them uh, bring amplify their message um and be, that could be again be technique chat gbt is constantly evolving and mm -hmm. it's constantly updating it's going to keep getting even better and better um there's so many markets that are saturated right now mm -hmm. and the best thing to do is find out how to um differentiate yourself from everyone else and i think asking chat gpt those mm -hmm. questions we talked last time about doing that mm -hmm. asking them asking chat gpt those questions how do i differentiate myself from everyone else um what can i do that's that nobody else is doing like that's a question i think you should ask yourself in 2024 is what am i willing to do that no one else is willing to do mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. that's unlimited revisions mm -hmm. so i no one else in my industry in the film production industry is willing to do unlimited revisions. Mm -hmm. No one, because it can get down a slippery slope. I've gone down that slippery slope before yeah, that's where old, that's clients old. want this revision and they want that, they want this, but no one is willing to do that. And I feel like as someone who really cares for my clients and that's like one of my big values is that I just want to go above and beyond for my client. I give them unlimited revisions. That's just an example of one thing that I am willing to do that no one else is willing to do. Mm -hmm. And you need to, as any business, you need to start to pinpoint that and make it, again, more than your product or service, more than what you're selling, and think about what you're willing to do. That no one else is willing to that do. That no one else is willing to do. Yeah. And then out of that, turn that into a video. Yeah, yeah. No. And explain that to everyone. That's and and a big tool for that is ChatGPT. Again, ask that to ChatGPT. Prompt it. Yeah, no, that's that's perfect because I do I do that's that's my biggest thing. I'm working on some some stuff now. How I'm gonna need you to do another one of the variations as far as for productions. But one of the things I've found out is a lot of agencies don't aren't willing to be a part of the production process. There are a few like I see. There's a few like I forgot some of the names, but there's a lot of big people that have production and they have advertising but a lot of people there's still a, a great amount of advertising i would say 95 percent of people that advertise don't have production a part of their advertising strategy and they not only that they won't even come visit you or not only visit you but they won't even put a plan together as far as what you can film um and talking to so many people uh th that have clients or they have an agency um a lot of people won't even consider yeah. it Cause it's like a, it's like yeah. a daunting thing. Like what? Yeah. I thought you just wanted me to run ads. But like, yeah, it's like you need to have video. Just literally go on LinkedIn and go to like the advertising section and type in um, like your audience and then type in like, oh, what kind of advertising is going to be. Usually people do like graphics and stuff, but type mm -hmm. in video and see how much more mm -hmm. LinkedIn will forecast you for mm -hmm. and how much more impressions LinkedIn is going to, show that you have from doing the video as opposed to like the written content or mm -hmm. you're going to get way more impressions. You're going to get way more clicks from doing video because that's what the platforms are, are prioritizing mm -hmm. there. They don't, you know, the graphics, they don't show that as much. No, and it's no. just a simple fact. You're going to waste more money. And that's why you need to invest in quality video because over time, Mm -hmm. it's going to catch up and you're going to get more impressions, more clicks. You're going to get more money over time. If you just invest initially in the production side. Yeah. 
What would you, what's your, so what's your process with like clients? So let's just say you onboarded me as a client and I have a company, yeah. a corporate company. Like what's your questioning process? Like you yeah. send down with me right now, the cameras aren't here yeah. and you want to start in terms of like, okay, I want to create, I don't know, content for internal and external. Like what, what's your first questions of like to start to help map out the, the production mm -hmm. day? So I personally, I ask questions and I, my questions are aimed towards what's your end goal? Mm -hmm. Like, why do you want to do internal videos? Why do you want to do external videos? And I try to relate to them. Mm -hmm. If I don't relate to the client, then it's not a good fit. Mm -hmm. If I can't understand what they're trying to do, that's my big goal is just to understand why they want to do this and get to that emotional level rather than, um, you know, money and stuff. But the end, the end result, what are you trying to do? What numbers are you trying to hit from this? Mm -hmm. How, how are you trying to do this? And I, I ask them a bunch of questions mm -hmm. out of those questions. I say, okay, I have everything I need. Um, you know, I ask them maybe like, what's your budget for this? Mm -hmm. A lot of times they don't have a budget, yeah, but they don't know. every once in a while you have someone who has a budget mm -hmm. and I say, okay, I'm going to take this information, go to the creative team. We're going to figure out the best way to use what you told me mm -hmm. and put that into life, into a story mm -hmm. and how to exploit the things that you don't normally show in your business. Gotcha. That's what I try to find out in that initial meeting is what can I exploit here? That's going to take you to that next level rather than making it just about the product or service. Right. Right. And I, experience. I, yeah. And I find that thing that I want to exploit and I make a whole proposal about it. I make, you know, I just showed you the proposal mm -hmm. that I send out. It's very detailed. It has the branding. It has everything. Mm -hmm. It's like five, 10 pages long. Mm -hmm. And I, I always meet with the client in person as much as I possibly can. If not, then I'll send it off. But I always try to meet with the client in person and go through the proposal together. Yeah. Together. Why and not? Why not online, bro? Because then you're not going to be on the same page. And if there's something that they don't like in the proposal, it's not worthy enough to give you that call or let you know. Mm -hmm. I always like to be on the same page. What if it's them. out of state? Have you ever dealt with that? No, oh, virtual. Okay. Well, virtual if meeting. If you can. Screen share. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I thought you meant, because I was thinking like if she had somebody that reached out out of state, it's like, we got to meet in person, bro. Yeah. Which no. of course, like if you can, but like I was just curious if you had like a scenario where it's like, okay. I'm going to come out there or vice versa. But my, the thing is, I want to be on the same page as you. I want to get as close to the decision maker as possible. Mm -hmm. And I want to be in it with you. And I want to be on the same. Yeah. Same page. Yeah. What's what's the most you've ever uh, like how many how many uh, meetings have you had before something uh, transpired? Like the most you think? Dude, it's taken like six months to a year on some projects. Yeah. Like it, it's taken a year mm -hmm. for some that are in the pipeline right now. It's yeah. just, that's how the corporate industry is. There's so many layers yeah, of approval. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I try to get as close to the decision maker as possible mm -hmm. and um, show that that's why I'd like to do the presentation virtually or in person and like mm -hmm. talk to them while I'm going through it mm -hmm. because then I can immediately see, Oh, well, is it money? Is it, is it that you don't like this aspect or that aspect of the proposal? What is it? And that way I can find it out as soon as possible right then and there. So you're telling me if if there's a production company sent down with someone and they're they're forcing you to they're they're pushing you to do something the first day that might be a red flag. Yeah, I I I never try to push things the first day. I try to get to know them first, right, right, and see if it's a good fit. And if it's a good fit, then I'll start to find the thing I want to exploit and then push that and say this is, you know, again option A, option B. Mm -hmm. For my experience, go with option A. I like it. And so, what what do you as we wind wind it, um, how, how are you viewing 2024? Like what's your, what's your, uh, current take on, on the year as it comes about? Like, are you like new year, new me, or is it, are you, are you take things quarter by quarter? Like I like to take things like, I don't really look at the year as, as a fool anymore. It's always like piece by piece, like per three months. I, I think I look at the year as a full, um, there's a lot of, exciting things coming mm -hmm. in my business. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of stuff that's happening. So I have an open mind going into the year, um, mm -hmm. with everything that's happening with AI and, and everything else. I have an open mind mm -hmm. and I'm focusing on 
the client's end goal always. But the way I do that and the way I'm going to get my client to their end goal may change. Mm -hmm. But that's my, um, that's my mindset going into the new year. It's having that open mind. Yeah. Awesome. And if you're seeing this right now, this is episode two. If you have feedback on any of these videos that you might see, <laughs> we would love it. This is something that we're super excited about and we're super passionate about. And we're speaking from our experience. We're speaking from experience and passion. And if you can give us feedback on what you have extracted value from that, positive or negative, that is exciting to both of us. Until next time. Yeah. Leave in the comment below. Yes. All right.